Happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to the Morning Show After Show, where we connect the dots the morning after. And we're so excited to be discussing episode seven today called La Amara Vita. And as always, don't worry, we're watching along with you, so there will be no spoilers aside from this episode. As you all know, I'm Kevin Taft, and I'm a member of the Hollywood Critics Association. As usual, I'm joined by my fellow members of the HCA. On my left, we have the delightful Morgan Rojas. And on my right, <laughs> we have the effervescent Carolyn. Hello. So Morgan, this, yes. was an, this was an episode. Oh, was it? <laughs> so what did you think of <laughs> this episode? Well. <laughs> Well, how much time do we have? <laughs> um, I was very shocked at the, I know we'll get to it, obviously, the yeah. big reveal. I was shocked. Yeah. I was shocked. I'll just leave it at that for now. I, I thought something was going to happen, but not that. No. Yeah. I think I'm going to have to agree with Morgan on this. I, I was shocked, but as I was watching the episode, there were little hints that I was picking up, and I thought maybe Mitch would commit suicide, mm -hmm. but... So I thought he would die in that sense, not in the manner that, I mean, we all, we all watched the episode. We all know what happened. But, yeah, I was a little shocked. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would like to point out that I did know that Alex was going to show up in Italy. Yes, you did call you did. that. We should have placed bets, guys. I know. <laughs> you you predicted a lot of true things. I know. I'm good at that. Should yeah. we give you I predict really unobvious things and the real super obvious that everybody knows. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I think, Morgan, next week we need to give lottery, we need to get lottery numbers oh. out of Kevin. That's pretty, that's pretty much where the predictions are. That you might not want to do. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Don't go gambling with me either. <laughs> Terrible. Well, we have some great comments this week that you've all been posting on our YouTube page and on Twitter. And this week we hear from Mark. Oh. Not that Mark. Um, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, so Mark says, this is great, but please also do this for Ted Lasso next season too, because we really need this kind of thing for Ted. Keep up the amazing work. Aww. Thank you, Mark. Apple, are you listening? Right, Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso yes, would be I would great. Love that. I love. Football is life. <laughs> <laughs> we also have one more comment that says, this show is so good. Love the deep dives and banter between you three. Aww. Oh. You guys, I, you guys do a great job, and so do I. We do. <laughs> so Morgan, well, let's talk about. Oh. <laughs> we love you too, Tara. Thank you, thank you. Yes, these comments are so nice, and don't forget while you're hanging out in that comment section, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the amazing Hollywood Critics Association content. Um, and keep the comments coming, and maybe your comment will be featured on an upcoming episode. Yes, and this is where we talk about lovely fan mail. Uh, let me open this up. We have Sarah Perez. She says, Hi, everyone. Really enjoying the after show. I like Mitch's story arc and Steve Carell's performance in this second season. But some people online question if it's okay to redeem the kind of people that in real life cause so much pain. I get... I. I think that's a really good question, yeah. Sarah. I mean, what do you what do you think, Kev? I actually did write a little bit of something on that because that has been bothering me too. Okay. Um, not not the fact that we're trying to redeem him. I'm liking that we're redeeming him, and I and, but I was reading the comments as well, okay. and I was a little surprised at how so many people were making that comment. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought I'm going to have to look at my notes, but um, I feel like. We as a society have kind of forgotten how to forgive mm. and allow people to grow and change. Um, and I feel like that's kind of sad. Like, what? so what are we supposed to do? Just be like, see ya. And I mean, and that's maybe what drove him to what happened at the end. Because he was like, I'm no never going to get out of this hole. Right. You know, and even does, no matter what I do, I'm never going to get out. No one will let me. And I think we as a, as, as a people need to learn how to to forgive. We don't have to forget, but we need to forgive people. Oh, it was funny with Alex in that dancing scene. She was like, so this is how cancel, this is what what it's like to be canceled. I thought that was very, very <laughs> interesting and that, that you brought up that point. Yeah. How about you, Morgan? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think cancel culture is just taking on, it's a whole beast that's just evolving and getting, wrapping everyone up. And it's, it, you know, goes back to what I was saying, I think in the last episode and in the first episode of how no one is allowed to make a mistake 
and learn from that without being reminded of the mistake. The mistake. Mm -hmm. And that's hard because no one's perfect. And of course, some people do things that are, are unforgivable. Other people can do things that it will take a long time, but if they truly are authentic and like want to get better and, and learn from their mistakes, they should be allowed to do that. And I think that's where Mitch was at this point. Like he was really trying to put that behind him and, and be a better person, but this whole kind of mob mentality wouldn't let him do that. Mm -hmm. And it was unfortunate, it was sad. Yeah. I, I find that it's interesting that, you know, at the beginning of the season, and it, we've talked about this off camera, but at the beginning of the season, it's Alex who, you know, is all zen and she's talking about how she's done all of this work. And then we get to this episode and it's quite obvious, it's quite obvious between the two who's really done the work. Right. It's like, you, I'm empathetic towards this character and I'm not mad about it at whatsoever. I think Steve Carell was, is a perfect choice to play Mitch because you know, we, we know him from all of his other work and so it was nice to kind of see him play this you know, despicable, you know, a little bit likable you know, character and then kind of see him, he's been really melancholy and, and um, and obviously not over the top Steve Carell like we're right. used to seeing. So it's been nice for me to see him in this role. I'm really surprised that he hasn't received more accolades for it yeah. because he's really good. Um, and then to also just see how Mitch has progressed. And you know, I hope that I would have it in my heart. I don't know, to be able to forgive Mitch. I mean, I think we saw how Mia it took the whole Vanity Fair, you know, article, like, to heart. Like, I'm really w wondering, you know, I would love to see what their relationship really was between the two of them. Right. Um, yeah, so I'm not, I'm not mad about it. I mean, maybe in real life it may be, it may be different, but we'll see. But thank you so much for that yeah. question. Keep them coming. And don't forget, if you want to send us over a comment or a question for one of us or have a question for a possible upcoming guest, send those back over to shows at HollywoodCriticsAssociation.com. Your question could be featured here or be answered by one of our favorite actors from the show. And now for one of your favorite parts of the show and ours, our weekly interview. Can you guess who it is? Can you guess who it is? Who is it? No? Well, mm. let's find out. Roll the tape. Today, I'm so excited because I'm joined by Nelson Coates, who is the production designer for The Morning Show. Nelson, it is so great to meet you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. It's great to be with you. Oh, you know, I am a big fan of your work. I know that you worked with John Chu on Crazy Rich Asians and In the Heights, two of my favorite movies, but even more so, you're also the production designer for The Morning Show. Um, can you tell us what exactly a production designer does for those of our viewers who may not be familiar with what you do? You bet. I'm one of the first people hired and I'm in charge of the concept and execution of the sets, props, costumes, hair, makeup, special effects, stunt rigs, basically all the visual narrative design aspects of a show. And um, in this case, uh, the challenge we had with the morning show was we were uh, we had started filming pre-pandemic, and then we had to shut down, and then we came back, and the whole story had changed, and it had changed to be written for locations all over the world, and so I had to figure out then how to do all of the world <laughs> in Los Angeles, so that's oh. just a little something that a production designer does. I understand, like, as you said, that you guys were just at the start of season two, having to shut down due to COVID, you know, I'd love for you to kind of touch base on how the morning show set changed from season one to how we now, what we see is the elevation in season two and how did it change from the shutdown from the beginning of COVID okay. to what we actually saw, what we actually see? Well, one of the things that I wanted to do was uh, add a complexity to the environments uh, of the show within a show and uh, also give it uh, a lot of flexibility. So I redesigned the standing show within a show set so that there are multiple levels and lots of lighting and graphics and things on the floors, added a conference room uh, so that you could have connectivity with what's going on in front of and behind the cameras, uh, redid the um, 
hallways and dressing rooms and literally the control rooms changed the whole color palette to pull things down, did a lot of things with geography. Uh, one of the things we needed was a new space to have uh, accidental interaction with characters. And I said, well, almost everything I know in New York have uh, if your show has been around for like 18 years, you'd have a huge craft service kitchen uh, where people are in and out. Uh, and so uh, we busted out a section of the hallways and created that. And, and we'd actually started filming for about three and a half weeks um, when uh, COVID shut us down. We were the first show to shut down and um, we didn't know what was going to happen. Um, we already had started Corey's uh, hotel room and renovations on um, uh, Alex's and Bradley's uh, uh, apartment and hotel rooms. And uh, so we shut down, we came back after they had rewritten, uh, you know, with a story based in the news, you have to reflect a little bit about what's going on in the world. And so we did, you know, a bit of the COVID storyline. So we used only about a day and a half of what we shot before COVID, which is literally in season one, right before or, or right after what happened in season one to start season two. And then we jumped forward seven months and and you start seeing the havoc and the craziness that uh, that announcement and on air uh, at the end of season one did to the new season. But with the rewrite, that meant that we needed to go lots of places in the world. So in season two, I had to do Wuhan uh, hotel room, train stations, uh, even a train, uh, a Beijing hotel room. We did Las Vegas, uh, New Orleans, uh, we did Des Moines, we did Green Bay, uh, and of course, um, uh, New York uh, and Las Vegas. Um, and we, we really expanded the New York world because um, I really wanted to see all aspects of New York architecture and different neighborhoods so they could really could pinpoint where we were. So you'll see people in restaurants looking out and seeing the world, but it looks like New York. Uh, there's all sorts of the kiosks and things that you find in New York. There's different types of subway entrances. We just fleshed out the world and tried to make it big and expansive so that when you're looking in an office, you know, you're seeing huge views. But the biggest thing that we did was no one wanted to go to a location during COVID. They wanted to be safe and secure. So we built in eight and a half weeks from my first pen pencil hitting the paper till we were filming, a 12,000 square foot office complex with elevators, um, Corey's office, Alex's office, a big bullpen with Stella's office in all the working areas. And then there are walls on all of this that flip and go up into to the air and switch with new walls and colorways and furniture. So that 12,000 square feet becomes 24,000 square feet of working space. So when you see those people going down those halls and in those offices and things and seeing these huge vistas, we're actually on stage 26 at Sony. Oh my gosh. So that's all done in Los Angeles. Yes, every that's, bit of it. And you did that in eight weeks. That is mind blowing. It was crazy. <laughs> well, but, you know, I was gonna ask you because, you know, we did interview Deshaun a couple of weeks ago and he did mention that you recreated Wuhan here in Los Angeles. Can you talk to me about what that process was like and you know what the resources were to use to that you guys used to recreate that here in Los well, Angeles I, where we're from? <laughs> obviously I needed to have a translator so we could make sure that all our signage and everything was correct. We also were doing Lake Como and an Italian villa and all of this. And so I had uh, both a, uh, a, a Chinese uh, translator for the Mandarin work, and we had an Italian translator for that, for the signage and things. But we knew we were gonna need a train station, and there are three major train stations in Wuhan. Uh, it's the city of about 10 million people, and um, one of them looks very British colonial, another one looks like a big glass box, and another one has three odd kind of architectural humps to it. And immediately I thought of, the Metrolink train station in Anaheim that has a huge hump to it. And I was like, well, if I bring in all the elements from Wuhan to this, the signage, the particular Chinese New Year decor that was that year, um, as well as just all of the, uh, the uh, uh, station elements, like the counters and uh, the, how you shrink wrap your, your luggage and all of those elements, that if they would say yes and give us one of their trains, then potentially we could do this. So. Metrolink said yes. We got a train. We dressed the entire inside, but the outside couldn't travel dressed. So everything was timed. So when the train came in, 
we had a whole team of people doing graphics on the whole outside to change it to the Beijing Wuhan Guangzhou railways. And, and then, you know, the, the huge uh, New Year's cake, all of the signage, it was, it was crazy. It was super fun. The whole platform with the kiosks and, and all the newspapers and hawkers, uh, it, was, it was pretty exciting. Oh my God, that, and it looks, I mean, I, I've traveled to Asia. It looks very, very authentic. You know, I would love to hear about you recreating Lake Cuomo in Los Angeles because I understand that Mimi is friends with George Clooney. So she has oh, yeah. firsthand experience of oh, what yeah. Italy is like. Talk to me about I did, that. I, that was, you know, that's a little nerve wracking when you know, okay, <laughs> I've really got to get inside. It can't just be Lake Cuomo light. It's got to really look like the details. But uh, in this case, um, I've traveled pretty much all over Italy, and so I was pulling elements from stores and, and uh, various ideas, but I pitched Mimi, there are two streets in Los Angeles that have cobblestone, and uh, Piazza Cavour in Lake Como has cobblestone sections on it, and there's some Italianate buildings on those cobblestones in LA, and so I pitched if we did certain green screen areas where we did set extension and I put facades on the brick buildings because there's not much brick anywhere in Como. It's all either stonework or stucco. And so we created the fronts of the restaurants and redid and uh, created uh, the restaurants and the, the whole plaza vendor carts. And then the buildings that you see far in the distance that we weren't going to go into, we actually created murals that had forced perspective in them and printed huge photographs on those windows. So behind Steve Carell, as he's walking across the plaza, you see things in the distance that look like they're full fleshed. And we just have some awnings and things in front and photographs in the windows. It, it was pretty crazy. And uh, everyone was like, oh my gosh, we're here, we're here. <laughs> You know, I was so excited to speak with you today. So thank oh, you thank so you. much for taking the time. It's so nice to meet you. And thank you for, for letting me uh, share a little bit about the morning show. <laughs> of course. Hey, are you okay? Am I okay? Oh. No. Do you see me? Have you heard a f***ing word that I've said out there? I skipped town a week and a half after I went back to the show. I no-showed a debate. I charter a plane into the middle of a hot zone 4,000 miles away. And I didn't tell a f***ing soul where I was going. Does any of this seem like something that someone who's okay would do? Well, I guess nobody is okay, so you're in good company. Oh, God, please, please. Just put philosophical Mitch away. He's not as smart as you think he is, all right? I need you to release a statement. You and me never happened. Alex, I'm done lying. You've got to be kidding me. Mm -mm. Really? Now you're, you're too good to lie? It, you're too good to lie when it f***s up my life. Why do I have to lie? Why is that going to f*** up your life? Because I lied on national television when Laura, Laura Peterson just sideswiped me with that f***ing question about what was the nature of your relationship with Mitch Kessler? You really think that that's gonna f*** up your life being associated with me? Well, how's your life been going being associated with you? Did you lose your career? Did your family fall apart? Have you been ostracized by polite society? Does your life have any meaning or purpose left at all? Nobody will respect me if they think that I slept with you. So now let's jump into our main part of the show where we talk about some of our favorite moments and some of the key moments from this week's episode. Interestingly enough, this episode all took place in one location with just three people, mm. which is interesting. I kind of like when shows do that. It gives us a little, not a break, but it's just interesting to kind of deep dive on just a couple characters. Yeah. So, Kira, what did you, what are your thoughts? One of my favorite moments is when Paula tells Mitch that she's going to leave. Yeah. You know, and you could see that she has feelings for, for Mitch. And when he asks, oh, was it because Alex was here? And she's, oh, you know, she kind of plays it off and then just kind of turns stone cold. But to see, you know, you know that she, she's feeling something and she's protecting herself. I, I, I really enjoy this character and this actress. Mm -hmm. I mean, she really gives this character heart. And, you know, I think a lot of people would be able to uh, identify with her. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I like that. And they, she gives him heart yes too, you know what i mean yes she just she kind of 
she takes the way he thinks about himself and his situation and forces him to kind of like go around, skirt it, to look at the kind of the good of what he's trying to do and, and the good in him because there's still good in him. Absolutely. And then, you know, to, to Bicky back on that, when you know he and Alex are having that big old fight in the um, foyer mm. and Alex runs out and she walks in and she's like, is everything all right? You shouldn't let her leave like that. Right. I was yeah. like, that's a woman. Right. So who cares, you know, about him as a person and not just to to be with him because she has romantic feelings or right. interests. It's like, no, she genuinely cares about this person. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that was very sweet. And it's very the very much the opposite of what Alex does, which is it's always about her oh. yeah. and about what her needs are, whether she loves um, Mitch or not, or or any other character, Chip, for example, it's still always about her. She's still about the damn book. <laughs> Shut up about the book. <laughs> like, it's coming out. Alex. What are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> and now she's like, make a statement. You have to make a statement. It's like, okay. That whole, that whole scenario, that whole banter, that, that fight, it was like, Alex is just plain awful. <laughs> just awful. <laughs> like, if we thought there were any redeeming qualities about this character, absolutely not. Jennifer Aniston plays her perfect to the T. I'm like, I was kind of angry. And just to yeah. see how empathetic, I love, I've been throwing that word around a lot, but how you know Mitch is trying to, to placate her mm -hmm. and then gets mean. <laughs> that whole like, that whole note thing, I was like, oh, I love oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Best regards, Mitch. <laughs> I was like, oh yes, I love that. <laughs> What um what did, what, were you, what did you think, Morgan? I okay, so this is just very basic, but I loved seeing Mitch and Alex back together. Yeah. Finally, because it's been what seven episodes at least since we've seen them in the same setting, and just their dynamic. I mean, Jennifer Aniston and Steve Carell being some of the best actors, you know, working today, and bringing these fiery characters to life was so great to see and. The dynamic, too, of, of going through these really tough moments where they're fighting, but then also the really sweet moments where her back hurts and she lays down and then, you know, puts her head on his shoulder. And it just was, ah, it was great to see that, but also knowing that, like, there's so much there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. behind the scenes and so many years of just tension and knowing it's probably not going to end well. But for, like, that moment, while they're both... Yeah. away and like in this fantasy world for like a split second they're kind of back to normal and yep when they were dancing together i was like oh, yeah like there's they... sparks right i was like something they're gonna sleep together they're gonna kiss like what is gonna happen yeah what i liked about that particular scene was you finally we've heard about how close they are and we see a little bit in season one where she leaves her party and yeah. gets in the car or she you know runs to his house and but again those have been you know those scenarios never ended well this one obviously didn't end well either but that whole scene in the living room you really could see how close they are and how vulnerable they can they, not only how vulnerable they can be with each other, but God, how nasty they could be with each other. Mm -hmm. And that's like the sign of somebody who knows each other so well. They may not respect each other to be able to dig, but I felt that that filled a hole for me. That, yeah. you know, they had been talking about it, but now it's like, oh, yeah, these two are best friends. These two are soulmates. Yeah. I mean, I liked seeing her break down, break down. That's yeah. the one time where it wasn't like she redeemed herself, but... It really showed how far she had gone, um, and I felt bad for her because she was breaking. I mean, clearly the the glass broke too. That was symbolic, but mm -hmm. um, but then he came down, and you know he was helping her out, and you know that's where you, the softness began. And she yeah. did the Oprah ugly cry. She yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the ugly Oprah <laughs> cry. I was like, you know what though? I'm glad that she did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. she, like it was time. It. And necessary yeah. too, yeah. But then to see Mitch on the flip side have his breakdown and that brought tears to my eyes. And then to see how Alex literally was like, you know, just backing away. Whereas when she was having her breakdown, he was like, well, how can I, how can I fix this? Right. And it was just like, 
oh man, Alex, you are such a bee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like so selfish. And one thing that I was thinking about is that phrase of like the really fine line between love and hate. Mm -hmm. And that, I mean, is pretty obvious, but that is kind of the, the Mitch Alex dynamic is one second, you know, they're, they're just reminiscing kind of about old times. And actually the revelation that Alex thought she was pregnant. No, yeah. right. Yeah. Right. That kind of was shocking. Yep. Um, that was moving too. Yeah. Ab yeah, absolutely. And Mitch hearing about that for the first time and seemingly he would have been supportive of it. And it's just like, oh, you're, Alex is kind of just throwing all of that history away because she is so caught up and, and self-centered in a way to just make sure she looks good and doesn't care about anyone else. And it's, it was hard to watch. <laughs> Speaking of looking good or not looking good, um, we haven't talked about him ask, Mitch asking Paula to delete the interview. Mm, and then yeah. she didn't delete it. We all knew she, she wasn't going to delete it. But then it. she said she didn't delete it because she wanted him to watch her delete it. Uh, so didn't that happen? Yeah. 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 But I still feel like, I mean, should we just start talking about it? Yeah, absolutely. Let's um, just get into it. So, okay. <clears throat> so, yeah. So he goes over a cliff, apparently, but also lets go. <laughs> he literally goes like, over a cliff. Like he's going, and then he's just like, I'm going to let it take me. Now, as you've said, it could be a telenovela. And <laughs> yes. He's going to be back next, next week. Uh, full body cast. Full no, body cast. Be no, but Morgan, Morgan said it, and I just cracked up when you, earlier off camera. She was like, what if he just lands on a bush? <laughs> <laughs> you never know. <laughs> or at the very last second, because they keep on showing Alex's car and his car, she like rams him. Something. I mean, yeah. this would be jumping the shark in a big way. But, <laughs> but that said, um, I feel like, and we've talked about this too, again, off camera, that it almost feels like Paula still has an interview, will use it to redeem him in, it, in his death. Is that a prediction, Kevin? Well, I think it was more, because you said it first. I know. I'm going to give it to you. Oh, thank you. Now, you made, you've commented last week's show um, many times, someone's got to die of COVID. <laughs> But I COVID. didn't want it to be Mitch. <laughs> but do you think, because we, again, we, we talk about too much way off camera, but we were talking about like, and I noted, noticed it, like, I think, I think it was Alex. She came in, can, she's like, can I have some of the water? Uh, and he gives her his water. Give some of the water. And then, yep. Oh. And then there was like a hug part, like, can I hug you? But then even Paula hugged him, I think too. So I was like, ooh, you're all giving it to each other, possibly. So my wonder is, you know, he could die. And if he dies, maybe the autopsy is going to be like, oh, but he also had COVID. Right. And now she's going to bring it back to New York. Or maybe she got COVID on her way in. Maybe she got COVID on her way in because Paula and Mitch have been quarantining for the last two weeks. Yeah. Been, he mm -hmm. was basically saying, oh, we're only in the last couple of days. So maybe she came in, has COVID, gave it to Mitch, who gave it to Paula. And now Paula has COVID, and now she, Alex is going to go back to and New on York. her deathbed, she reveals the interview. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Alex is just like destructing and, and just causing chaos everywhere. Well, That's she, the you, case. <laughs> I mean, she, her middle name should be Cass. So she'll go back to New York and either just quarantine for 14 days. Well, she'd probably have to. Any, I wonder if she's just going to have to when she gets back. Because that might be that moment where they're like, people who travel have to quarantine. So then she can't be on the show longer. Yeah, then which Laura. Which puts Laura is going to be on the show even longer. Ooh. She's not going to make her happy. No. She's going to come back and find that Laura has, has been filling in for her. And she's going to be pissed. Yep. But then, she, you know, for her, if she has to quarantine, she's going to have to admit that she'd been out of the country. Yeah, so, well, I mean, she, I mean, it would probably come out when she, like, if he does die and everybody finds out. I think it'll come out like I just saw him. Mm. And then again, maybe the COVID thing is gonna attach it too. So I wanna just touch base on, um, on Mitch leaving us. Uh, I don't know if you, I, I, I was saying and earlier in the show that I felt that he was going to die, but I didn't think that it was going to be over a cliff. I thought when- Sorry, he's not funny. I'm just <laughs> 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 we didn't think it was over the cliff, um, but it was when, He's saying his goodbye to Alex, and he asks her again 
uh, reiterates, you know, you promised to take care of Paula. And to me, that for me, that was like a sense of, yep. is he going to commit suicide? Like, is he, he was walking out of the room, to, uh, out to the door, uh, I think out to the balcony. And I was thinking, Oh, is he gonna? Is he gonna hurt himself? Is he? Yeah. That that's how I thought he was gonna go. I thought, thought the same thing. I'm sure they probably wanted us to think that too. But mm, where was he going when he got in the car? He was going to go get Paula cigarettes. Right, right. Because you know they did the deed. We all okay. I, I knew that was gonna happen. Did you think that was gonna happen? Yeah. Why wasn't, why yes. wasn't that in one of our predictions before? Yeah, right. I know. Well, that actually made me think too, I wonder if part of the reason why Mitch was driven to suicide, no pun intended, um, <laughs> oh God. was, sorry, that was also not funny, um, <laughs> is because he, he like built up this reputation and trust with Paola and they, you know, got intimate. I wonder if part of him was like, oh, I can't just have a female friendship. Like I've kind of been known for this, like crossing the line, and not that he was crossing the line with her, because she was Slapped very him. much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I literally was like, "What?" Yeah, and just she said something happened? about. She said, yeah. "Show me your balls." Show me like, your ass, and I was all, "Yeah, well, yeah." Is she Italian? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, I was like, okay, yeah, go there. Like clearly, she she was consenting, and it was like an adult relationship. But part of me thought, like, oh, I wonder if he just. Coming off of this story, also, if he just thought he can't do anything right, even though this was, you know, right, a right relationship. Yeah. You know? I mean, he did say to Alex that he didn't want to, to stain her with, you know, what, what, whatever right. it stains after having sex with him. Yeah. But, you know, when he's in the car... And I, like, I, I knew something was going to happen when, you know, obviously when the voices are coming in and he's reflecting on all the horrible things that yeah. has happened. I was like, oh, man, this is going to this is going to happen. And then. Over the cliff, it did over the cliff. You went. What did you guys think about, you know, those last moments that they show of his he's last dancing? With yeah, his Alex. last moments is, is thinking of Alex. Yep. What did you guys think about like smelling that? her hair? Too. Yeah. Very sweet. Yeah. I mean, I think it just showed you that he was in love with her, probably. Yeah. In a, in a way. Maybe not totally. Not, not that he wasn't aware of it, but not really thinking he would ever go there. But in the last moments, like, kind of admitting it to himself. And, you know, letting go of holding everything on. And then literally letting go. Because he let go of the, wind, the steering wheel. What was also interesting, too, was Alex is also driving in the car to go to the airport. So they're both driving opposite directions. And one thing that I noticed was that they both, at one point, had their hand out the window, mm -hmm. but kind of going the opposite direction. And not that I thought they would, like, high five <laughs> as they drove. I did. But it was kind of... <laughs> I did. There was oh, a moment no. I'm like, they're not going to do this. Please tell me they're not going to do this. The slow motion. <laughs> but maybe, maybe it was just symbolic of like okay this is you know like you're so close but so far like we we're on the same team in the long run and i, I i'm with you in i a feel way. Yeah. Like that, I, I see but. what you're saying i feel like i feel like it was a soulmate moment yeah yeah you know well essentially said. them doing the same exact thing going opposite opposite directions you know it, it it's kind of like they were connected yeah and Obviously, them, each other not knowing what the other one is doing, and then Alex being able to make it to the plane to go back home and be safe on that f plane flight that Mitch arranged for her, yeah. and then he dies. Like, how, I mean, w my whole thought was, when they find him, knowing, like, all of that, what Alex had just gone through with him, if sh that woman does not feel any guilt... You know, if she goes off and still, you know, af and finds out after, you know, when she finds out that he's dead and then still goes off and, like, publishes this letter, I'm like, I didn't, I, I already dislike her, even though we love, I, I love this Alex, but I dislike this Alex. I think that'll just make her even more despicable. I don't think she will. No? I don't know how they'll, they'll work it, but I feel like she might just finally come clean. Ooh, 
And her, mm -hmm. then she'll have a redeeming moment. I would like, yeah. I think I would like that. I mean, she did it kind of at the end of the last season where she finally started admitting stuff. So I feel like that could happen again too. Cause you have, you know, people having to come clean about things. Um, Bradley has to come clean. So maybe it's her time to come clean and just stop fighting it. Because this is her whole problem. She's been fighting it for seven episodes. She's become an unlikable person. She must realize she's becoming an unlikable person. Ugh. So, you know. And she's been working on her own book and stopped when she got the show. So maybe yeah. that's I like the end that. I right? until right now. Like maybe she's so... Yeah, gonna write this like that's gonna be her Mitch chapter. Yes, will be yeah. like her. Oh, I yes. Hey. <laughs> I think that's. I think that that's Prediction. going to be her. Oh yeah, I think I, I think you. We'll I see. think you're oh. onto something there, Morgan. Okay. Maybe we should put bets on it. <laughs> and you know what she can also do is, because she hasn't finished her book, she right. can comment on Maggie's book, as to what's right. true, what's not true. She can have her say. Oh. Too. So that's maybe it's good that she hasn't published. Because if they came out at the same time and they babbled each other, but now she can actually be like, that's right, that's wrong, that's right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think we should get to our predictions, but I feel like we've just made a bunch of predictions. <laughs> I think so too. I don't know if there's any left. Do I have any left? I'm really wondering how they're going to, we've only got three more episodes left. So I'm really wondering how they're going to button this up. I feel like yeah. their next season, COVID's going to continue. Mm. I don't even think we're going to get to Black Lives Matter and all that stuff. Right. So I feel like they're going to continue this, which will be interesting that they didn't try to do it in one season. Got so it. I yeah. Like that. And maybe it'll end. Maybe the, the, here's my prediction. Okay. It'll end with this season will end with somebody getting COVID. Mm. Yes. And in the comments below, tell us who you think <laughs> is going to get it. Yes. Tell us. <laughs> all right. Well, anyway, that is it. That is all for this week. I'm exhausted. That was very emotional. <laughs> so much happened. So much drama and heartache. We need to catch our breaths. But come back next week because we have got to find out where all of this is going. So as always, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Hit that notifications button. You can tweet us at HCA Critics and follow us on Instagram at Hollywood Critics Association. Thank you for joining us here at the Morning Show After Show. I am Kevin Taft. I am Morgan Rojas. I'm Kira Lynn. And we will see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye.